Okay, this is going to be the uh, unit review for pre-calc unit one. The first part will be no calculator. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to start with this concept that I got to factor this bottom, so it'd be x plus seven, x minus seven. Now, uh, what you have here is you got your removable discontinuity from this elimination of x, which that means x can't be zero. All right, these are non-removable ones. If I solve that, would be x equals negative seven, and solve that would be seven. That would be your asymptotes. So that would be my answer for that one, okay? For this example here, I want to put 4 in for x, okay? So what that's going to be is negative 2 times 16, because that's what 4 squared is, minus 28 plus 3, okay? So that would be negative 32 minus 28 plus 3, okay? If I figure all that out, it's going to give me negative 57. Okay, this one, I'm going to insert a, a, a binomial here. So what I want to do is I'm going to do 2, 4a minus 2 squared minus uh, 4a minus 2 plus 10. So I'm inserting that in every spot where there's an x. Now, caution here, I would make that a negative 1 because that's going to help with distributing later. That squared means I'm going to have to make a square, which is 4a minus 2, 4a minus 2, 4a times 4a is 16a squared, 4a times negative 2 is negative 8a. Same thing here. And then negative 2 times negative 2 would be 4. Now, caution. You got that 2 right there. Okay? So whatever I've combined, I have to, I have to involve there. So that's going to be 16a squared minus 16a plus 4. And I'm going to distribute that. Okay? So what I got is I got 32a squared minus 32a plus 8. Take negative 1 and multiply. Negative 4a plus 2 plus 10. Okay, so I got 32a squared, okay, negative 32, negative 4a is negative 36a, 8, 2, and 10 is 20. Okay, and so that would be what that would combine to. Okay, move this. All right, so this, let me write this question. So what this is asking for is the x and y intercepts, or the, the zeros is another way to say x and y intercepts. So if I factor that, that's going to be x minus 2x minus 5, okay, because what I want to do is think about the numbers that would multiply to 10 that would add up to negative 7. The only way for that to happen, if I wanted to look at that, is the factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5, is both sides being negative to multiply and add. So that's why that's that. These solutions just are x equals 2 and x equals 5. The y-intercept piece is really easy. All I would do is substitute 0 for x, which basically leaves that as the y-intercept would be 10. Okay? All right, correctly describe the end behavior. So what we want to look at is the furthest arrow to the right, this would be infinity. And since it is pointed up, this would also be infinity. Okay? This one right here is the furthest arrow left. That's negative infinity since it's down, it's negative. Okay? So f of x, as x approaches, uh, they, they try to trick you a little bit here. All right? So as x approaches negative infinity, okay? All right? So the y would all, this is f of x, just a fancy symbol for y. So this is a little bit tricky. Okay? Same thing here. All right? So, um, as x approaches infinity, which would be this, the y's got to be positive, okay? So x is positive, x is positive, that's negative. Okay, this, these two are possibilities, okay? Uh, and then we got the negative and negative, so that means this one will be the possibility. Because as x approaches in negative infinity, this is the x, this is the y. x, y, okay? What appears to be the minimum of the graph in, uh, this wouldn't be number seven, this would just be uh, number five here, okay? All right, um, uh, the minimum appears to be right here at zero, negative four, okay? All right, I think we're on our next page. Okay, describe the set of numbers in interval notation, all right? So the concept behind that is 10, if it's got the line underneath it, it's closed. All right, now this way would be positive infinity. So what I would have here is 
10, infinity. Now, infinity always has a curve. If it's got a closed circle, all right? Okay, union with uh, x is less than 4. So 4, open circle there, less, all right? That's negative infinity. So I'll have negative infinity to 4, okay? Open circle, or a curved bracket. The reason it's curved is that's an open circle right there, okay? What's the domain and range of this graph? Okay, let me see if I can move this real quick. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. I'll make sure I mark it over here. What I wanna do is I'm looking at uh, these furthest terms. So this, this is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So this is negative five, three. This is um, uh, one, negative one, three. Okay, this is negative one, one, two, three, four, negative four. This is two, negative four. This is uh, two, negative two. Okay, this is positive infinity, positive infinity. Okay, so what I want to look at, this is, is basically what's my domain here? Well, my smallest x value of everything here is negative five. So that's negative five. Okay, and that runs all the way to basically, uh, it runs to two, and since those are both open circles, all right, I'm gonna be two, okay? And then now the biggest uh, y value, our x value is infinity. So that's gonna be union with two to infinity, okay? All right, the range, the range, the smallest y value I have, okay, is uh, four, okay, all right? So four is the smallest y value, all right? And then there's a jump here, okay? And then it goes from negative two, all right? So I got four with a union, okay? All right? And that four actually would be a close, would be a bracket. Okay, that four would be a bracket here because it's just the y value of four. Okay, it jumps to here, and then when I go to this part, the smallest y value is negative two, and the biggest y value is infinity. Okay, so this would be the domain, this would be the range. Okay? All right, find f of negative three, and then find the rate of change on the interval of negative two to three. So negative three, okay, now it's hard to see, is one, two, three, okay? This ends up being at, um, Negative three, negative six. So the value for negative three would be negative six. Uh, to go to the interval of negative two uh, or from to two, I'm two, one, two, three, four. So this is two, four. All right, so the idea behind this is this would be my x1, y1, x2, y2. And the slope formula is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, okay? So my y2 is four. My y1 is negative six, x2 is uh, two, and my x1 is negative three. So four minus negative six would be 10, two minus negative three would be five, so that rate of change would happen to be two, okay? Okay, this is now for one question, is this function? No, all right, two reasons, the x is repeat, and it fails the vertical line test. Okay, I think that's it for that page. Okay, question number 11, show that this is an even function. What I do for even is I'm going to substitute negative x into the function. Okay, now, what even powers do is it keeps the number out front. Odd powers, so even, Powers keep odd powers change. Okay, all right. So this would keep this. So now it's x4. This would keep this. This is no change. So since this is the same, we have an even function. Okay, given that this function uh, is this even, odd, or neither. Okay. So I got 1.7, I'm putting that negative x still in, okay? So what this is going to do is this is going to change this. 
what this is going to do, because it's one, it will also change this. Now, since it doesn't match, we know it's not even. So let's try taking out a negative 1. If I divide both by negative 1, this is what I get. Divide that by negative 1. Now this matches, because I did this part, this was odd. If this didn't match the original, it would be neither. Okay? All right, 13. Okay? Which relation is a function? Okay, well, we know this one would be no, because I can make a vertical line. That would be no. This would be yes, and this would be yes, because those would pass the vertical line test. Okay, is this function symmetric to what? Okay, so remember from our talk on symmetry. Okay, on symmetry. If uh, it is the uh, x axis, okay, if it is the x axis, what ends up happening, if I put this in, okay, if I put this in, this should give me the original, okay? If I do, let me write the notes for y-axis. Y-axis, if I put um, uh, negative x and y, I should get the original. And if I put negative x and negative y in, this will be the origin if that works, and that would give me the original. So what you have to do is look at, if I put that stuff in, do I get the original function? Okay. So let's say I wanted to test this x is negative y. So I would do, okay, I'm going to say, all right, x, negative y, right, just x. And what ends up happening, this is negative x, y, minus 5x squared. And this is not the original, okay? So we know that it's not symmetric to that axis, okay? Let's look at, does it, is it symmetric to the uh, y-axis, okay? All right? So what I would do is I'd put the negative uh, uh, x squared in, okay? All right? I'd put the negative x squared in and, and, and see what would happen there. All right, so I would put negative x. I got y negative x, and we just talked about squared, so this would just be negative x, y. This is going to keep this concept being this. So this is still not the original, so we know it's not the y-axis, okay? Let's go to the this last one, which would be putting negative x and negative y minus 5 negative x squared. Now, negative times a negative, this is going to be positive x, y. Since that's an even power, that keeps the same. So as you can see, that's the same as my original. So that's going to be symmetric to the origin. Okay? All right? That's how you figure that stuff out. Okay? State the domain and range of the function to the right. Okay? So I'm going to label all these points. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's negative 4, uh, 2. This is uh, negative 3, negative 1. Then this goes to 1, uh, negative 3. And then this would be infinity, infinity. Okay, let me put that over here so you guys, I know you can see it. Okay, all right. So if I look at what's my smallest x value, my smallest x value is negative 4. This is a continuous function, so I don't have to worry about any jumps. So then my next biggest x value is infinity. My range, my smallest y value is at negative 3. All right, and that's a closed bracket because it's at a point. And the biggest y value is infinity, so that would be my answer there. Okay. Moving on. All right. <clears throat> Determine whether the graph is symmetric to the x and y. And we, we just went over how we're going to do that. This is just going to be some more practice. Okay. All right. So as a reminder, all right, um, x-axis is... Uh, x, negative y, y-axis is uh, negative uh, x, positive y, and origin is negative x, negative y. And what we're hoping to get is the original, okay? So let's start with this. If I put x and negative y in, okay, we know that squares keep that, so I'm left with the same thing. Uh, as the original, so I know that's respect to the x-axis, okay? 
All right, I won't, I won't go through the other one, but if I put negative that in there, that would not be. And if I put those, that would not be. So this is going to be respect to the x-axis. All right, let's try this one now. If I put negative y in here, that's 5 and negative x. So what I got is that's going to be negative y, negative 5x cubed, and, um, and positive 2x. As you can see, that's not the original, okay? So now I'm going to go on to this one. I'm going to put negative x in there, and I'm going to see what, uh, uh, positive y and see if I get the original. If I put that in there, positive y, it's the same result here, so this would be this, which clearly okay, uh, does not match the original. Now I want to put... Uh, both uh, in there, okay, all right, um, and if I do that, I would get negative y, okay, I would get um, negative, uh, it's the same result as this, so negative 5x cubed plus 2x. Now, as you can see, I didn't get anything clearly, but what I could do is if I, if I divided this by negative 1, this would still be this, okay, all right. So what that ends up being, that's going to be the origin, okay? X, Y equals uh, 5, okay? All right, so what would happen here? This one's going to be that, because if I put negative X times negative Y in there, I get 5. X, Y is 5. It's the same thing, okay? If I put negative X in there, this would end up negative, and I put negative Y in there. So this would also be origin, okay? All right? Determine whether this is even, odd, or neither. Okay, so if I put the negative x, that's the first, negative x squared, so that's going to stay negative x. This is going to be uh, x squared minus 4, okay, all right. Um, if I took out a negative 1, okay, if I took out a negative 1, uh, that's going to end up not working, okay. Because if I took out the negative there, all right, uh, it's going to end up changing that. So this is going to be uh, neither. neither. Okay? Because if I try to take out the negative, this is going to end up affecting that result. Okay? All right? It's going to end up uh, changing that result. Yeah, because I think out that that would be there. Okay, without graphing, describe the end behavior. Okay, the first thing you want to look at is is this a um, is the power even or odd? Okay, because basically it will follow one of these four pictures. Okay, this is even. This is odd, these are positives, these are negatives. So I want to say even or odd for the biggest, so that's going to be even. And then is it positive or negative? That coefficient, well that coefficient is negative, so I'm going to be looking at this result. So that's negative infinity, neg uh, uh, negative infinity. This is positive infinity, negative infinity. So the end behaviors for both, as x approaches infinity, y approaches negative, as x approaches negative infinity, y also approaches negative. Okay, same thing here. Now this one in this case would be odd, positive. So this would be the picture I'm looking at. So x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive. x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative. Okay, so those would be the end behaviors for that. And I think that's it for the calculator part. So, or the non-calculator. I'll do the calculator uh, next.